Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I want to touch on something that is very interesting to me and uh, I think most of you have been asking me how I'm able to do some of the things I do and uh, this is the truth. So um, I want to talk about freelancing uh, in GIS or how to be probably a consultant, how you go about uh, the different uh, things within the industry and how you manage um, the different aspects when it comes to projects. And um, I would start by saying that um, it's something that doesn't happen overnight, okay? So um, essentially, you have to build out a lot of effort or a lot of work for you to become that uh, guy or to become a consultant. And um, in my work that I've been working as a consultant, you find that there are so many elements or so many lessons that I've learned over the time. So, of course, you don't start as a knowledgeable person within a new industry, but over time, if you are keen enough and you're able to stop, reevaluate, and be able to replan, you'll be able to understand how the industry works or how the ecosystem works, and you'll be able to actually apply that and get going. So, I'll break down into small um, elements on how I've been able to do this over the years and what has really helped me and some of the things that can help you also if you are looking at doing the same. So the first and most important thing is understanding your niche. When I started uh, GIS, my focus was showing uh, guys on how to use GIS software and at the same time also extend that to web mapping. So I would really say probably web mapping is what made me um, known out there because I was bold enough to go uh, to the different uh, libraries, different platforms, and show people how to build web applications using uh, the different um, libraries and different platforms. So understanding your niche is very important. Are you a guy who people go to when they want to do something to do with, for example, hydrology? Are you someone who is very good at CAD systems? Are you someone who is very good at uh, spatial analysis? Are you someone who is very good at visualization? Are you a developer? So what's your niche? So it's good to basically have a niche because this is where you learn or this is what you'll approach the industry with. And the focus matters a lot because, of course, GIS is so, so big. And as you know, um, I know well, most of us have known GIS maybe in the three spectrums, which is basically the surveying side of things, remote sensing, and the GIS element part of things. But if you look at it from an industry perspective, it's so wide. So you cannot basically market yourself as someone who knows everything. And of course, no one will actually believe that. Of course, it depends with the situation, the environment, and where you are. But you, it's good to choose a specific uh, service. Think of it as a service. Think of um, a service that you offer to the industry. The value that you offer to the industry is what will determine how much the industry will be able to compensate you or be able to respond to your requests. So if your work is web mapping, know that you need to learn a lot of things to do with web mapping. If your work is spatial analysis, again, you need to know that that's your part. The second thing is build a portfolio of what you know or what you do. This is because uh, when you are, for example, hunting clients, um, Everyone will ask you, what have you done before? Have you ever done this kind of project before? Have you been able to uh, maybe actualize such a service or such an integration before? So you cannot tell them you've done, but there's nothing to show for it. So it's good to basically have like a portfolio. I don't mean that you have like a whole list of 50 projects because when you're starting, of course, you've not done 50 projects. You can actually have one project or two but they will propel you to higher levels because this is what the clients in that specific niche are looking for. So build that portfolio, maybe one, two, pro three projects, build it somewhere where you can actually share links or you can share information with the potential clients and they'll be able to reference and see uh, what you do. The other thing is um, today at least things are a bit easy. Um, there's a lot of uh, socials or social platforms. You have uh, different uh, platforms such as LinkedIn, you have uh, Reddit, you have YouTube, you have Twitter, you have, sorry, it's X nowadays, <laughs> you have X and all those are platforms which are avenues to you being able to reach out to the market. 
So your clients are actually within, probably within your socials. These are the people who will actually see some of the work you're posting and this is where they'll be able to reach out to you personally and they'll be able to sort you for the different services. So um, it's good to leverage the different uh, platforms and of course at the end of the day you have to um, understand or see the need for uh, what industry that you are focusing on. The other one I would say is um, you basically uh, look at where your potential clients are. So let me give an analogy. Today, if you are attending a conference and this conference is um, the, the key attendees of the event are probably government officials and your work probably is in line with government or your government probably can be a big client for your work, you need to be there because talking to these people, you'll be able to actually uh, get that network be able to actually give them ideas on what they can actually do with with your solutions and then you probably get um, uh, an invitation or you get an appointment with one of them and you'll be able to actually get that opportunity the other big uh, opportunity or the other big thing you can do is look for where jazz communities are this is can be online it could be probably uh, weekly meetings in different cities I know most of the cities hold uh, some regular meetups. You could actually attend those. Uh, you could actually go uh, probably become a speaker or become a presenter, do something in line with your solutions, showcase what you've done or what you can do. And this is something that will actually help you a lot because now you'll start gaining actual contacts within the industry. Um, the other um, element that I would say, and it's actually... Uh, somehow ignored, but it did work. It's actually going for what we call the low-hanging fruits. So by low-hanging fruits, I mean you can go for uh, low barrier offers. This is because um, when you get to these offers, you can actually upsell or you can actually do more than the offer that was there in the first place. So it could actually be a free meeting. It could be a free consultation call. It could be someone who's maybe asking you to attend the event. You showcase because they already know maybe you show, you know how to do something or you know how to uh, achieve something in your uh, work. And this is a service that you can actually upsell and probably propose a solution to them and they'll be able to uh, basically give it to you. Think of it as a trial period when it comes to software. So it's like you're giving someone a trial, but at the end of the day, they'll subscribe to the actual product and they'll start paying. The other a big element. Um, it's something that you might be online, for example, and you look at some of the solutions that are developed and probably you notice some problems. So when, when it comes to such a scenario, you can propose a solution to the organization or to the individual and book a meeting with them where you can actually now showcase the actual solution to the problem they are facing. So I, I remember one time I did this, uh, but it's something that uh, it's a bit rare, but if you get that, then you become the go-to person when it comes to that uh, solution. So the other element that I usually, or the other uh, aspect that I usually advise most people is that there's magic that happens within the industry after you've been there for some time. One thing is that uh, over 70% of your clients in a year you probably come from the already clients that you have. Yeah, that's very true. So 70% of your work in a year will come either from an existing client or a referral of that existing client. So it's always good to actually uh, work well with clients, be able to offer solutions that are actually long lasting and that work for them. Be able to look at um, uh, 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 what are the prospects into the future of this organization or this client. Because at the end of the day, if this client believes in you, they will actually talk about you in different meetings or in different forums. And this is how you'll be able to get these jobs. So it's always good when you have a project. At least try, you can achieve your deadlines beforehand. You can go to an, ex an extra mile to deliver more uh, value to your client. And one of the things that you also uh, look at is ask for testimonials or ask for referrals for the, uh, for these, from these clients. This is because, of course, if a client is happy, 
there's nothing that will hinder them from proposing you or from proposing your company or your entity to another client who's maybe a friend or who is a partner within the industry so those are my top um Uh, advices in terms of for anyone who wants to become a freelancer or anyone who is getting into consultancy and this is something that you find that it's very very key and it's not easy let me say that because of course if it was easy everyone would have done it but it's a task that you have to take it's a day to day uh, operation that you have to take care of and you have to re- to improve for clients to come keep coming back and rely on your services The other good elements about the industry is that it compounds. So the same way skills compound, even the networks compound. Um of course in the first years you'll get a lot of um networks that are not very strong or networks that are not very worth worthwhile because depending on where you focus your energy on, those are the networks that you pick. For me what I would actually say is that look at Uh, forums or look at uh, networks that actually bring the business because as i said uh, in some um, post I, i think a while ago is that most of the people you know or that you think of within your industry are not basically your clients this can be your friends they can be your acquaintances they can be your uh, maybe colleagues but these are not your clients so always be able to identify a client from all these groups because for you you need business and it's from this business that you can now work with the people the friends the colleagues that you know within the industry and the other key uh advice that they got some years back is that sometimes it's good if you get for example a project it's good to actually uh you can bring a talent from the industry if it's a task that would take maybe 5 6 months or probably 12 months you could do it in half the time if you maybe got help and that's time for va- if there's value for money you'll be for able to focus on another project if you got to finish this on time so of course there are projects that you get where you want to like do all the work but if you got some help or a second or third person you'd actually be able to do this a lot or faster and more effectively so this means that you also have to be a very good leader Uh, in your freelancing uh, job you also have to be able to delegate you also have to be able to um, understand or change depending on the change on the requirements or uh, 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 the business requirements from different clients so the freelancing itself is something that uh, if you take that path it will take time but as i mentioned it will compound over time if you focus on the right efforts and you focus on the right niches within the industry and you'll be able to keep up with your job or with your career as a GIS freelancer. <laughs>